What's cracking, YouTube? Um, we're going to do my UFC 110 predictions. I'm going to whip through the prelims real fast, and then we'll go a little bit more in detail on the main card. Um, you can subscribe at MMA at, like Matt, with an extra M, bull. Um, okay, we got Igor Pakjarvic, or Pakarvic, or I don't know, Igor guy, <laughs> and then James Tahuna. Um, Igor is a wrestler, Brazilian jiu-jitsu fighter. He's uh, primarily fights in Croatia, trains with Mirko Krokop. He's coming off a loss to uh, Vladimir Vedashenko. Um, James Tihuna, Muay Thai wrestler. Um, he's the number one light heavyweight in the Australia, New Zealand area. Um, he's got notable wins over Anthony Parash and Anthony Rea. This is UFC debut, last four wins of by TKO or knockout. Um, he's very versed in submissions as well. I'm going to go with uh, James T. Huna, second round TKO. Then we have Goran Relich and C.B. Dalloway. Um, we all know Dalloway from the Ultimate Fighter fame. He's a great wrestler from Arizona State coming off a win against Jay Silva after being put to sleep by Tom Lawler at UFC 100. Excellent submission. Very good submission. And then Goran Relich, who is a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu brown belt. He's good at kickboxing. Um, he uh, dominated Wilson Govea and then injured himself. So it was a long way to return. Um, C.B. Dalloway, I think, uh, if he doesn't win this fight, he's pretty much out of the UFC. Um, so I'm going to go with second-round submission, Goran Relich. Uh, Brian Foster versus Chris Lytle. Chris Lytle's a great fighter. You know, um... 17 wins by submission, four, five the, four times five of the night winner, um, very good wrestler, good takedown defense, always puts on an exciting fight, um, he's a banger with a good chin, he's fighting a freestyle fighter in Brian Foster coming out of a loss to Rick Story, um, Rick Story is an up and comer um, in, the, in this division here, and um, after or before that he uh, KO'd Brock Larson, um, I think that uh, Brian Foster is is probably gonna is gonna take this one. Um, he's you know very well rounded. Um, he's got heavy hands. Um, they're gonna sit there and bang it out. And I I'm gonna go out on a limb and say first round TKO for uh, Chris Lytle. Um, Kristoff versus Stefan Bonner. Um, Bonner you know hasn't had a win since '07, and um, he hasn't had a notable win since '06, which was over Jardine, a very controversial um, decision. I thought that he lost the fight. Um, he's on a two-fight losing streak. Although he is a good, well-rounded fighter, and um, he's good with submissions, good off his back. You got Kristoff, um, loves the Kimura. He's first in submissions. He's got very, very heavy hands. Coming off a loss to Brandon Vera, um, was an uneventful fight, but wasn't a domination. You know, what I mean, and Brandon Vera, you know, is, is a notable opponent. Uh, I'm gonna go Kristoff, unanimous decision. Then we have the most irrelevant fight. In UFC history, almost that I mean, as as long as you know the UFC continually grows and continually becomes you know the main you know promotion in MMA. I mean, let's be serious. A lot of people aren't, you know aren't fond of the UFC. I'm not a diehard UFC guy, but you know, I mean, let's let's keep it real. It's it's the main UFC promotion. We have Chris Haseman Hosman versus Elvis Sinisek. Elvis Sinisek is eight and eleven. Chris Hosman is 20 and 16. Um, only reason why this fight got signed, they're both Aussies in the fights in Australia. I'm going to go real quick through this one. Submission by Chris Hosman, second, third round. Very irrelevant fight. Um, Miracle Krokop versus Ben Rothwell. Um, this is the first fight on the main card. Um, Krokop is coming off a controversial win over Mustafa El Turk. Poked my man in the eye. Everybody thought it was a devastating strike until you saw the replay. Then it wasn't. Krokops looked very lethargic in his return to the UFC ever since the Gonzaga head kick knockout. Um, Rothwell is a uh, two and two in his last four fights. Um, losses to uh, Andre Arlovsky and Cain Velasquez. Um, very good striker. He got solid, heavy hands. And I mean, those are two people that's you know you can't be ashamed of losing to. Granted, Arlovsky's kind of on the downfall in his career, but it's Andre Arlovsky, one-time UFC heavyweight champion. So um, I'm thinking Ben Rothwell is going to grind this one out by unanimous decision, if not knock him out by the second round. Um, Ryan Bader versus Keith Jardine. Um, Ryan Bader, in my you know unprofessional opinion is a very very overrated fighter he's very one-dimensional if he can't beat you with his wrestling and his land praise probably not going to beat you um with that being said um he's undefeated you know he's got wins over red Schaefer. he's got wins over Vinny maharles or uh 
you know, Vinny from the show. Don't know how to pronounce his brilliant Brazilian name. I apologize, Vinny. Um, and he's fighting Keith Jardine, who was a very unorthodox striker. Um, he keeps fights on his feet. Um, he's got excellent kicks. He has lost three of his last four fights, and um, he's a very exciting fighter. But, you know, if he loses this fight, it's four out of five. Jardine's a big name. You know what I mean? He's a big name. I don't think that he's on the verge of losing his contract, but the thing is, as four out of five fights in a promotion like the UFC, he might be strike force bound. Um, it would be a great addition for strike force, and I also think it would be a great loss for the UFC. That's why I think if he loses, they still might keep him around, but I don't think he's going to lose. I think he's going to dominate this fight. I think he's going to grind out a unanimous decision with his own orthodox striking and his leg kicks. Um, after that, we then have uh, George Sotaropoulos, I love that name, um, versus Big Daddy Joe Stevenson. Actually, there's not a Big Daddy in there. Big is Big Daddy Gary Goodrich. Not even similar in style, size, or color, for that matter. Um, so, uh, we got Joe Daddy Stevenson, George Sotaropoulos. Joe Daddy Stevenson, great le wrestler, loves his guillotine, great, I can't say great, very good in jiu-jitsu. He's on a two-fight win streak. Um... George Sotaropoulos, on the other hand, is a very underrated fighter. He's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He's on a five-fight win streak with great submissions. Um, I think it's going to be a good fight, but I think Joe Daddy, his strength is going to be, and his wrestling is going to be what's going to take him over the top. Although, I wouldn't be surprised if Sotaropoulos wins this fight by um, catching Joe Daddy off guard in a submission. I think Joe Daddy's going to grind out a unanimous decision. Um, then we come to my favorite fight in the card, which is going to be Michael Bisbean versus uh, Vanderlei Silva. Um... Michael Bisbean is coming off uh, Dennis Kang uh, TKO, which um, he looked horrible in the first round. Previous fight to that was the the brutal knockout by Dan Henderson. Um, I think that Dana White and the Fertitas brothers were were trying to you know get their feet wet in the UK um, so desperately that they kind of handpicked Bisbean's opponents. You know what I mean? So he could be the UK poster child. You know, it, I mean, it makes sense. You know, I may be wrong. It makes sense. Um, another overrated fighter, in my opinion. But don't get me wrong. I don't think he sucks. You know, he's very well-rounded. He's got good hands. He's got good jiu-jitsu. He's good off of his back. Although, you know, we don't see him there very often unless he's fighting Dan Henderson. But then he's not doing anything from his back. Um, and he's fighting Vanderlei Silva. Vanderlei Silva has lost a step, but he's a great striker. He's never in a boring fight. Never in a boring fight. Coming off a loss to Rich Franklin, um, I think Vanderlei knocks him out in the second round. Um, I don't think Bisbean's learned very much in his striking defense, you know, by the way that he looked versus Dennis Kang. Um, and Wandy's nasty. You know what I mean? He gets him in that tie clinch. The knees, night, night. Um, so I'm going to say second round knockout, Vanderlei Silva. Um, then we come on to the main event. Um, Big Nog versus Kane Velasquez. Uh, Velasquez coming off a great fight over Ben Rothwell. It was kind of a, a early stoppage, but, you know, even if the stoppage didn't happen when it did, 20, 30 seconds later, it was going to be stopped anyway. So it was, it was complete domination of Ben Rothwell, no, you know, hands down. Um, he's fighting Big Nog, who's a legend of the sport, coming from pride. He's had the, the wars with Fedor. Um, he had the war with Couture, one of the best fights in a long time in the UFC, which he won. You know, he had the great stand-up battle with Frank Mir, even though he didn't win it. Um, coming off the staff infection, I think... Um, I love Frank Mir, but I think it might be a closer fight if he's 100%. Um, you know, he, he never ceases to be amazing. He gets rocked. He comes back. You know, he gets rocked. He comes back. So um, I think Cain Velasquez's strength and his ability to withstand punishment is going to win this fight for him. It's going to be another unanimous decision, although I think it's going to be a great fight. Um, I'm going to do something that most people who predict these fights don't do. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, submission of the night. I'm going to give to... Um, I'm probably going to say Goran Relich with submission of the night. Fight of the night, I'm going to say Cain Velasquez versus uh, Big Nog. And then knockout of the night, I'm going to go with, uh, of course, my main man, Vandalay Silva, the axe murderer. You can subscribe, subscribe excuse me, at uh, MMA at... Bull. It's spelled like Matt with an extra M. Bull. Um, and we're going to do the UFC 111, which I'll be at in um, March 27th in New Jersey. So, uh, you know, I'll catch you guys then. Um, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And, um, you know, got to love my diehard MMA fans and my sponsor, No Fear.